All right. I have got this recording on. I'm hoping New North Dakota is here too. I'm hoping we don't run into any glitches that we did a couple of weeks ago when I was traveling, speaking in Vegas for Google. And um, But I'm here at my home base, as you could see when you looked in the background there. All right, everybody, let's go. We've got Florida, Sarasota, Florida here. Hello, Avdita, hello, welcome. I'm glad everybody's finding that question box or the chat box, I should say. I do wanna give a shout out to our Google partners that are here. They are the ones, if you have any questions afterwards to reach out to because they have the boots on the ground to help you. They truly are vested in your success. So to be a Google partner isn't just sign along the dotted line and everything is good to go. You are vetted. You go through an actual application process. There is a maintenance process that you have as well to show that you really do serve your community and that you're very interested in small businesses, especially having the tools that they need to be successful, especially <clears throat> when all of us go online, right, for everything, right? Hello, Mary, I see you here as well. Welcome from Humble. Hello, Karen, welcome. I'm glad everybody's finding that chat box because that's the best place that I can hear you. All right, this is who I am. Of course, if this is your first time in a session, I would love for you to let me know in the chat box. Hello, let me know. Yes, Victoria, oh, I love that Victoria is in the house as well. I saw you here and thank you. I'm so glad that it's been a wonderful partnership for you as well. So I would love to know who has been in a session with me before. If you have been with me before, put number two. If this is your first time in with me, let me know by the number one. Just let me know in the chat box. Because if you've never been in a session with me, all right, Lynette, I see you here as well. May, welcome, welcome. First, all right, if you've never been in a session with me, you'll see I'm highly interactive. I use that chat box often because I wish we could be face-to-face -face in person or I could hear you. I'm live. You can tell this is not a recording as I look and see Nancy's response and Katie's response and Karen's response. But do know that this is your session, all right? So you do need to let me know. And those are my ears right now because I can't put everybody on screen. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about how we can design think for entrepreneurs. Now, what I'm sharing here today with you is more than the slides. And the reason I say that is because I come from a strong design background. So for the last 14 years, or actually 15 years now, I've been working with groups of inventors. So I have been everywhere from the garage startup to rock, walking through a plastic mill, through 3PL warehouses for distribution, going through global finders, trying to start an office in Ireland, Ireland and dealing with people in Ireland or the UK or Australia or China or Germany or Canada or Mexico. So I've worked all across international e-commerce for the last 15 years. And I understand also what it takes to start something, to figure out how are you going to ship it? How are you going to design it? How are you going to meet the needs of somebody? Because it is not you build a better mousetrap and people beat a path to your door. That does not happen. In fact, you really need to let them know what what you have designed or what you do, how it matters to them and how it makes a difference in their life and addresses a need that they have. So as we talk about that today, I do want you to see that you can hashtag out grow with Google and let people know that you're leveling up your skill. And if you want to connect with me and take any screenshots and hashtag grow with Google plus use my Twitter handle, which is the first one here, or the second one is my Instagram handle, please do. I will retweet, repost you, put you in my story. I make sure you get the visibility that you need because I know you never know who someone is, who they'll become, who they influence. And I could know somebody that could help you get your next warehouse, that can help you in finalizing the blueprint of your design, any of that. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad everybody is here. Yes, I'm so excited that everybody's here. All right. There it is, Michael, what you've been waiting for. If you want a copy of the slides and handout, they are there right now. If you go to bit.ly slash Google Design Think, so that's Google Design Think, because we're talking about design thinking for entrepreneurs. So again, Google Design Think, you can get the slides in handout now. Of course, the replay's not there because we're happening live right now. I'm recording right now, except for the Q&A section. I am not recording that. That's the benefit for everybody here. But the replay will be there later this afternoon. So when you go to this link, or if you use this QR code to the left, what will happen is you will have to enter your email address that you registered with, as well as a password if you've never been to the site before. When you create that password, remember, Remember it because you'll need it when you go back and I post the replay later this afternoon. You may not get a notification about that. So I wanted you to know. 
Yes, and the replay is only available for a limited time, only 10 days. That's all you've got to see the replay. So that's important. And Michael, that really is by design because Google, the Google platform is ever changing. There's been so many changes within the last four days. It's pretty mind boggling and there's more to come. So I can't ever guarantee that a recording is active. As soon as Google lets me know something, I usually know just seconds before I even come on, I get a little alert on my phone and I get an update of the platform. So again, let me get my little arrow out of there. If you want to get a copy of today's slides as well as the handout right now, you have it. Ah. Look, Michael's speaking to my heart here. Google is better than Microsoft Edge. And Google Chrome is actually a great marketer's tool. I'll show you that. I know you can't hang out with us to the end, Michael, but um, if you guys want me to show you how you can use it as a marketer, it's got so much rich data that other browsers don't have. And I can show you that later. But let's go ahead and dive in, everybody, all right? Hopefully everybody has that. I'll show that again. We're gonna be talking today about what is design thinking because there are five phases in design thinking. And I know this because I work with project designers, engineers, CAD drawers, 3D designers, graphic designers, and there is a lot in that process. You really do have to understand your audience. You can spend all your time inventing, and there are a lot of failures behind that. With the Kickstarters that I've worked with, Indiegogo, there are a lot of people who give that opportunity that you can fund them who don't make it. There are just as many people who make it and fund their idea but they cannot take it to market because they have no idea to handle the marketing distribution of it or the manufacturing of it and how to even source materials. We're gonna identify those challenges for your potential customers and how you can actually meet the challenges of them and then also craft and test your solutions because this is important. De design is about testing. You are not your best customer. You may think what you created is the next best thing to slice bread, and it is not to somebody who that doesn't matter to them. Okay, so that's what's really important is understanding that. Now, what you can do first is sign into your Google account. If you've got a Gmail account, you're golden. If you bring up everything that I'm going to show you here and you're already in your Gmail account, that's great. You'll be able to use all of the tools. This is a free personal Gmail account. If you don't have a free Gmail, Gmail account and you have email and you don't want a Gmail account, then not to worry. All you need to do is go ahead and create a Google account. It's 100% free. This is not the paid Google workspace. This is a free personal account. You don't have to use Gmail. You can use the free personal Google account to actually get to everything that I'm going to show you here today. Okay. The first thing is though, of course, your Google Drive because that's 100% free. Your Google Drive gives you access to 15 gigabytes of storage and you want to store your ideas. Nothing works than a power surge happening or maybe you're on your mobile and you lose some connection and now you've lost that great idea and sometimes it doesn't come back there's a saying in the design world that oftentimes when people have an idea 250 other people have that same idea now it's a race to the market all right so as we look at this when you're in your Google account you will see that you can go to Google Drive which is the primary color triangle when you go to Google Drive you can start your Google Docs here you can click on new and then you can just start a blank document. When you start a blank document, now you can start writing. So whether you have Google or not, if you're using something else, this is now time for you to work on your business instead of in your business. Really understanding what design thinking is and it is creative problem solving. It is user centered. That's why I spent so much time here at the beginning talking about how you can fail if you do not understand and listen to your customer. Not listen to what's in your head, but listen to the best prospect and what they need. And is it feasible to them? Is it feasible in function and economics? So the design process is first to actually understand and empathize what people are doing. You know, what is it and observe? Where are the pain points? You may have the pain point yourself, like the dog owner that I was working with that designed something because he was suffering from that pain point every time he went to work. He actually had to deal with all of the issues of his dog being locked up by himself for such a long period of time. And then define that, express what that problem is in different points of views. Think of like the customer. If you've never read the book, Seven Blind Mice, then I encourage you to read that book. It is a Newbery Award winner. I know a lot of people have not read it. I read it to every single one of my boys as they were growing up. But Seven Blind Mice shows you, let's say if somebody's looking at a coffee mug, um, that they may see this side of it and realize that there's a handle. But let's say they're looking at the underneath of it or just the top of it. 
they may not have the same perspective that you have. That doesn't mean that they're wrong. It does mean, though, that they are looking from a different point of view. Their vantage point is different. And then also, how can you identify the problems and solve those problems? What are some of the solutions that can happen? There's a lot of brainstorming and a lot of people don't know how to brainstorm where it's free flowing. They do it with a lot of limitations, which then limitates the ability or limits the ability to go to the next step, which is to prototype and then test. I cannot reiterate this enough. I've seen many, many designs fail and burn and expend everything of somebody's savings because they don't do their testing. Okay, so testing is more most important. So when you think of it, when you look, for example, here, you know, beforehand, how many know and remember when we couldn't get stuff on on, on demand before? You know, there wasn't even any TiVo or Roku or streaming, or you could choose your time on Sling. There was none of that. We had the old fashioned, big old chunky tape that we put in or a DVD. How many of you remember that? Or if you don't want to say, just think about it. You don't want to reveal yourself and, and give your age just like I did in the chat box, then don't worry about that. But we now have on-demand TV. There was a time when we all thought about we couldn't live without cable. You know, the rabbit ears were there. Then the cable came through and we all loved it. And then now we're like, who has cable anymore? Who's even watched cable anymore? You know, I was laughing with my husband because he loves to watch the Cowboys games. Yes, I'm a Texan, but he loves to watch those. And I told him we're going to have to find a way to stream because nobody but you watches actual cable TV. Think about the, the foot activated doors now. You know, before what was happening, people were struggling and dropping things and somebody saw a need for that because they saw the challenge that they have in the safety issue by not having the foot activated door or even ride and home sharing. How many of us grew up being told never? Never get in a vehicle with strangers. And what have we done with Lyft and Uber all day long? We get in the vehicle with strangers, right? All right. So first is to empathize, to really understand what is it that the need is that somebody has. So as you think about that, you want to connect to the user's story, which means you really have to understand who that best customer is. Who is this designed for? You guys have heard me talk about this, who have been in a session with me before, that if you target anybody, everybody, and somebody, you'll get their second cousin. Nobody. It's too wide, and nobody has that kind of type of money unless you're somebody like Coca-Cola or some of the larger corporate companies that can't afford Procter & Gamble to do that massive amount of testing. So for you, when you are talking design, who is that customer? Who's going to use this? This is important. That doesn't mean that your product or your design or service can't serve anybody, everybody, and somebody. But if you miss that best customer, who is it? Everybody else that you can get, you can learn more about, and it's gravy. So as we're understanding users, it could be that maybe you're looking for women of color or people of color. Maybe you're looking at a specific age group parents maybe of children as well, somebody who just bought an SUV, somebody who's in the seniors who's looking for single member homes, downsizing, empty nesting, maybe somebody who is going through divorce or going through marriage or having a baby. It could be college students. So really understand who that best customer is. And this is the non-sexy part of design, but I will tell you this without having this foundation, you are building on shifting sand that you cannot afford to fund. So when we look at inspiring new thinking, for example, think of that audience, all right? And you can use the Google Doc that you just opened up to write down your audience at least five challenges they face. Now, I'm off camera right now, but you can see that it says three minutes right here. We're not going to take three minutes for this, but I do want you to write a couple of things down and then maybe, maybe you look at coming back to this after our session here today and you fill this out completely because knowledge is not powerful until it's applied. I'm sharing a lot of knowledge with you here today, but if you don't apply it, it's just a waste of your time. So I'm telling you right now, think of and look for one thing, and this could be the one thing that you're going to take away from our time here today. Okay, who is that best audience? Who helps you? Now, I have spoken to thousands of small businesses. Just so you know, I have spoken to thousands who will tell me, Maria, but you know, I'm special, I'm unique, I serve everybody. And every one of them, every single one of them have, that have said that is no longer in existence because you can fund maybe five to seven years out, but you cannot sustain. Everybody that has done the hard work of saying, okay, I'm going to go ahead and focus on this group. And then after that, they start building out and scaling. It's the nail it, 
before you scale it mentality. And if you don't have that, then you better have some really good sugar daddy behind you to help you stay focused and funded. All right, so how do we define who that best customer is and what it is that we're actually looking at and designing this for? So as we look at this, your goal is really to observe that best user. Really find out what is it that they need. It is important for us to be experts in these people that we're designing for. What is it that they want, that they need? What are their pain points? What's their decision journey? What's their customer journey as they're looking and deciding on different things and what do they need to do next? Do they need to see video? Do they need to talk to some friends? Do they need to shout it out onto their Facebook feed? What is it and what does that problem statement look like before they get to that moment when they start looking and searching? What is it that you are actually solving for them? This is really, really important for you to slow down and take advantage of understanding them. And here's a great cheat sheet to do this. So in this instance, Sam is a super busy manager, right? And needs a way to integrate some healthy eating habits. But he doesn't want to feel like he's on a diet. He doesn't want to count calories. He doesn't want to worry about, oh, I've got to measure out different weights of things and the grams of things. He wants to feel that he still has freedom and that um, spontaneity of being able to choose and go to different restaurants. But he needs to figure out a way to integrate healthy eating habits. Maybe a busy manager and he's stuck in lunch meetings all the time, right? So, or after hour receptions because he needs to meet with clients or take care of people internally that he's working with. So as we look at this, think for you, what is that problem? Okay, what does that user look like, sound like, feel like? Where do they spend time? What do they use? Are they more on laptop? Are they a, a smart TV user? Are they iOS? Are they Android? Do they like using Google Chrome? Are they a Facebook user? Are they know security is everything and I use Brave and DuckDuckGo and I don't do this. Who are they? What matters most to them? It's important for you to have that kind of insight. And if you don't know what that is, again, look at potential competitors who provide a similar product or service that you are designing or who provide a product or service that your customer will need or uses in the absence of your product or service, or in addition, like it's a complementary non-competing product or service that they're going to utilize when they need what you have here and you need to design. All right, it's really good and important for us to understand that. And I know the difference that it'll make in your business, really big profit difference. So I'm going to go back to the statement here if you need to take a screenshot of that. And remember, I did share with you how to get a copy of today's slides already and the handout. If you need me to show that up again, or actually I'm going to drop that in the chat here. How There's the link. I'm going to drop that right now to everybody. Hold on just a moment. So there's the link if you need a copy of today's slides and also the handout that I have because you have that all accessible to you. The recording will be there later this afternoon, okay? So I'm recording right now, but I won't record the Q&A section. All right. So we know here, Sam is a busy manager. All right, we see this. We've defined who our actual customer is. This is somebody who wants healthy eating habits, but does not want to be bogged down with all the other things, you know, of counting different things or looking at grams. So it could be ways that they can have some freedom when they're getting healthier. All right, so now... Now that we know who that best customer is, and you see that I raced by both of those exercises in a minimum of three minutes, more if you're working on your business to really formulate that, but maybe that's your to-do list of what you want to apply today and really take advantage of what we've learned. The next is to ideate. So really, how can you come this? This is, you know, the ideation process sometimes is a long process. Sometimes people get stuck in restraining their brainstorming as opposed to truly letting it free flow. This is something where you're just brain dumping. Okay, so every crazy idea, you need an eight, um, you need an eight armed or a five armed octopus to make this happen. Really, it, it's, it's amazing what you can come up with and you'll be amazed what people can develop. I don't know if you know this because I am a huge um, Star Wars geek, all right? So the original Star Wars back from George Lucas days and I remember I remember when um, Star Wars first came out, George Lucas had to do little models. He had to come up with a camera. He had to come up with a 
glass system of how he blueprinted everything that was actually showing within all the different areas when they're in the death star when they're working through different areas he had to put all that and invent that nobody had created that that never existed so when you see skywalker sound lucasfilm all of these things he had to create everybody in the industry told him no because that didn't exist that ability did not exist and now it does exist and we see that i mean when you look at chat gpt and what's happening there how many thought that you could just do that now that now there's the ability to even talk to chat gpt and the ai within your browser you can actually speak to it so those days when we looked at star trek when we they would actually speak into the comments say computer do this that actually can happen now so as you see that, there's a lot of design that happens. So what the Crazy Eights design method is, is you actually create a two by four table in your docs. So you're actually setting up a two column, a two column actually document, and then you're putting four rows in that, okay? So if you don't have Google Docs, don't worry, just do this on a piece of paper. You know, handwriting works well. I am definitely a very tactile person, so I like to do this on paper, but you do have that available if you wanna save this within your Google Docs. I prefer to do it on paper, as well as a lot of the design teams that I work with, they do it on paper, and then we just take a quick photo of this and then just upload that. So as you think about that, now in each section, write out an idea, okay? It can be as crazy as you want it to be. Just write it down. Don't worry about it. Don't try to validate it. Don't try to figure out, oh my gosh, how is this even possible? Just write it down because we don't know. Those people who thought that back in the day that we could have on-demand TV may not know that, all right? May have never thought of that. You could come up with something that somebody just doesn't know exists, but now you bring it to market. Now, for example, let's say that um, one of our customer database that we're looking at, we're focused on is women of color or maybe college students. So it's a college student seeking temporary housing and they're looking for online roommate matching services. All right. So maybe that's what we could provide that best customer. Maybe it's furnishing temporary rentals. Who would think that would be such a business, big business now? I remember about 15 years ago when a friend of mine came to me to, with an idea. And she said, Maria, what I want to do is I want to work with our local apartments and I want to furnish these apartments for them and go ahead and schedule out a block of apartments and then a couple of small homes that I'll furnish. And then I'm going to go to all the corporations, all the oil and gas companies, the large gaming companies. I'm going to go to them and ask them that if they ever bring anybody temporarily in from out of the country or maybe from another state where they're working on a larger project. And now they're going to have corporate housing rental. Her business that was 15 years ago is now grown nationwide. She had one office here locally, which was her home office. Then she worked in the business incubator with me where we both started our business businesses. And now she has 17 branch offices. She has grown so immensely and I'm so proud of her because she started this idea when everybody thought she was crazy that they could just go to Aaron Rents Furniture and do all of these things. They didn't have to have already furnished homes, but she made it nice and easy for a corporation or somebody who's working in relocation to do business with her or even online learning programs if they're seeking temporary housing maybe it's not the housing that they need maybe they just need the education so access to it online is better than them having to go to a location to get a dorm to get an apartment they can do this all online which is highly interactive as well so for example now you can use those Google Docs and write down eight possible solutions okay again if you're not using Google Docs don't get hung up on that just do this on a piece of paper it can be any piece of paper, the back of a, a mailing letter you received, a, a junk mail letter you received. Just write it down and write it into eight. It, don't limit it just by Google Docs. You know, if you know the story Southwest Airlines, it started on a napkin. In 1977, it started on the back of a napkin is all it was. So you can use anything, cocktail, cocktail napkin, scrap papers, whatever you need to do, but get that down. Because a lot of times we think we're going to keep it in the clutter of our head and we don't. Now the next step is to prototype. How do you prototype what this is? How do you now validate exactly this idea? So before we were brainstorming in the last section of design thinking, ideate. Now we're going to prototype it. So what happens when you prototype? You're going to actually draw this out, right? And when I say the MVP, it is not the most valuable player. This is the minimum viable product. Let me say that again. Minimum viable product. 
Write, I'm with you, Melissa. If I don't write it down, forget it. It's gone. It's fleeting. That's why sometimes in meetings, I'll tell people, hold on just a moment. I'm not trying to be rude, but I must write this down because I don't want to lose what you just said. So the MVP is the minimum viable product. Melissa, I am with you on it. Exactly. That's what it is. So what the minimum viable product is, is what is the minimum thing that needs to be created to address that issue, that question, that pain point that your customers are having by what you're designing. What is the minimum? Because a lot of times we will spend too much of our time designing all the bells and whistles that make, we think is makes it amazing because we're so close to the idea that we think it needs to add all these things and they don't even know what the basic idea is and you don't really understand what is it that they do need to solve first and foremost. Everything else is just gravy, right? So as we look at this, for example, what does minimum viable product mean? So you see this here in minimum viable product. The first row shows you how not to do it. This is not okay. We got a wheel. Let's say we want transportation. So we got a wheel. Now we're going to do wheels on an axis and we're going to put this base. It is not coming up with different models of vehicles. That is not what you're doing. The minimal viable product means I can get there on this, a skateboard, um, roller skates. I can get there on a unicycle if I want to. I can get there on a bicycle, maybe a motorcycle. I can use use an electric car, an actual car, I can use a boat to get there, a golf cart, all of this is that's what actually it looks like. So you're expanding past just one idea that you're building on different variations, but you're looking at minimally. If I have to get from point A to point B, how can I get there? I can walk too. I can do all of these things. I can boulder. I can get wherever I need to go. All right. So this is the difference about minimal viable product. This is also an area that a lot of people struggle with too, on what is that minimal viable product and they just want to ideate around here, different versions of the product. So for you, when you think of this, pick one of your ideas and really flesh this out. So again, the crazy eights, or to come up with eight just random ideas of what things could be with no validation, with no how is this going to be built, or is this even possible? And then the next thing is to really take one of those and start fleshing it out and thinking about the MVP. What's the minimum viable product? Not variations of it, but how do you actually solve that problem from point A to point B? And then you start now thinking about what are the resources needed? Does that even exist? Does plastic of that type exist? Does manufacturing of that type exist? What do I need to be able to make this happen? Do I need to rent a factory? Do I need to actually start working in different countries? That's exactly what happened with one of the inventors I was working with. He realized that he did not, there is no technology out there, there's no manufacturer out there that could do this. So he actually had to um, rent a factory at first, an entire factory to be able to do this, and then he built his own factory with all of the different tools that he created, which was, I mean, which used, because, and when I say huge, it's a big decision to make, so I don't want to make little of it, to even put one of his molding tools together as a $50,000 from idea to putting the molding tool. That's not even the product. That is how to mold the product into this plastic form that it needed to be. So that's why I say you don't want to make a mistake at this point when you're spending 50000 and then realize, oh, well, I didn't need that to slant this way. I needed it to slant that way. And I'm saying that and kind of giggling when saying that, but I have actually seen um, two or three inventors actually go through that, which is um, pretty sad because one was able to survive it and the other two did not. Um, it was too much. So you want to test. It was too expensive, really, is what it was. So you also want to test. That's why you want to look at the minimal viable product, because you want to test and not have all those bells and whistles in the way. You know what it's like when you start changing things all of a sudden, and now you don't know, did this work or this work? And it could be that there's a costly piece in there that doesn't need to be in there because it's not the minimum viable product. So as we look here, you want to test this out, really prototype it out. And so what is an iterative process, okay? That's what you need to really focus on to start prototyping. So iterative means that you're going to start thinking about, first of all, where you know you would actually show up, right? What's it going to look like when you get there? But as we go through this, what is it that they like and what they dislike too? Observe them and what they're doing. So I see this a lot of times with companies that I work with, they'll use their own internal team to be able to vet whether a product works, which is great, but understand your own team 
does have a little bias. And the reason they have bias is because they understand the core of where you already came from. They already have the story down. Maybe they understand the culture and the focus and the tone that you already have, where somebody from the outside going in does not understand. So they're filling in a lot of blanks, realizing this is how this meets this, but you're not addressing that. You really need to take this and observe it. For example, if you are doing software as a service, then I highly encourage you to let somebody look at it that has no association with it. And when I say that, you know, let somebody completely cold, let grandma look at it. That's what I even teach people when I'm doing web design. I explain to them, let your grandma look at it. Or even the direct to, uh, consumer association, the D2C association says, navigate your site drunk every quarter, because when you realize your site or your service, let's say if you have software as a service, is not easy to navigate in these kind of forms or these kind of, of different awarenesses, then you're making it too difficult and they have to really understand how you think and they may not have the same kind of experiences or background that you do. Now, when you're promoting it out and you're design thinking, you also have to think about this. You know, so when you look at this, for example, Sunrise Coffee in 2020, they had to do that pivot, right? Didn't we get tired of hearing pivot? Yes, Alvin, this is being recorded. This is not the Q&A section, but this part is, okay? So good question. So when you see what Sunrise Coffee did, they had to pivot to a digital presence because in 2020, they opened up in February, right? What happened March 17th of 2020? Everything in the world changed. So they really had to lean into their social media and their online advertising, and they needed to do more online coffee sales. When she started this, she thought it was going to be 100% in person. She was not prepared for this, but she had to make that quick, quick adjustment. And she, in fact, started providing coffee donations to first responders and healthcare workers because all of us were freaking out at that time trying to figure it out. So as you see the process, number one is empathize. Cannot, cannot get past this foundation here because if you do everything else without this, then you're building it on some faulty information and that can be very expensive. You do need to understand from their point of view, what does this look like, sound like, feel like, what is the actual pain for them? Not the surface level pain. One of the questions that I like to ask whenever I'm working with potential um, buyers that are working with you know customers, so they're potential buyers or they're actually working with competitors and I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, I'll ask them, you know, what's the actual challenge that you have? And everybody gives the surface level challenge. We have all, through all of our life, been able to say a quick answer that's just kind of right here. It's the surface level. But then I'll ask that same question eight times. Yeah, but what's the real challenge? No, what's what's the real, real challenge? And the real, real challenge sometimes could be that, you know what, I don't want to do this, but I have to because I have to make money. So I have to figure this part out. So when you get to the real, real challenge, now you can get to and understand what the minimum viable product is. In the design process also, when we ideate, we want to look at those crazy eights. Just let it flow. Let your creativity flow. Sometimes people have to do that in pockets. Sometimes we find that people do that best in showers. One of the inventors I have actually takes a recording in with him and puts it on a shelf in his shower because he, or a little recorder, I should say, because he actually has his best ideas then. There's another inventor that I work with that has his best ideas and ideations and different formulations of what he's creating right when he wakes up. So he has a recorder and his phone right there in the bed. Now, it, what I think is funny next to the bed is, um, I think it's funny is that in the morning he'll say, oh my gosh, I get mad because I see all these messages and I realize they're to myself. So he's saving all of the different ideas. But you can prototype here as well as now test. Test, 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 and reach outside your comfort zone to test somebody who doesn't know exactly how you think or about your company. So as always, I like to end things with resources, but I'd love to answer your questions as well. So get those ready. I'll keep the recording right as we go through resources, and then I'll turn that off in just a moment. Some of the free resources that I like to share are this. This is a five-day visibility plan that I put together. If you already have a business or you're starting to create a business and you want to let Google know ahead of time, at least 90 days ahead of time that you're about to launch it, then you definitely want to look at this because you want to get that visibility and search in maps as early as possible. Yes. <laughs> so many PM buzzwords. Yes. So absolutely I do. I understand, you know, about sprints. Um, I've had to learn that. It's funny, Alvin, because I started uh, in business just marketing. And then I realized that marketing distribution for inventors became a real issue, especially when you're working with Kickstarters. That's a major issue for them. Um, so I learned the distribution and the project management side. Um, I learned, you know, exactly how to test 
and uh, you know how to open markets too. That's also interesting. If you haven't used uh, Google's Global Market Finder, I encourage you to do that. It's a very free tool, 100% free, and I like to use that in deciding what next market we need to do to go to and what the operations, delivery, how to get things on a boat or a plane there. I like to look at all that. You can also go to the Grow with Google site. So if you go here to the Google site, that's another resource that you can use. The Grow with Google site is where you can find out the different things that will help you grow your business. And you can even reach out to the Google partner that invited you to ask them to bring me back to talk about this or actually for them to even do some of these trainings as well. Perfect, Chris. I'm so glad you got the visibility plan. Thank you. Thank you. It's 100% free. There is nothing else that you need other than that. But if you want to stay connected with me, there's a free community that we can do that too in our marketing community. And again, if you didn't see this at the very beginning, this is the link to get today's slides that I just used, as well as the handout. The replay will be there later, later this afternoon. When you go here, it will ask you to log in. Use the email that you registered with and create a password. There's no cost to you, but you do need to remember that password to come back later to look at the replay when I do upload that in a little bit. You're welcome, Melissa. And as always, I like to model what I teach. So I teach people to ask for reviews and different ways they can ask for reviews because that's one of the sessions that I do is how you can increase your online reviews because we all know that you need 60, 60, 60, five-star reviews to even be seen on Google and 120 if you are an e-commerce site. You need to have at least that many five-star reviews. So I teach people that when you give good service, let them review you easily by going to a QR code or a quick link. So you could do that as well. And if you want to stay connected with me, you are welcome to stay connected with me. You can find out what sessions I'm doing next at mariacoaches.com. But if you go to this bit.ly link, it brings up all my socials. I'm on every single social. Connect with me on the one you feel most comfortable with. And I look forward to hearing what you actually applied that you learned today because remember what I said knowledge is not powerful until it is applied I see a lot of people come to sessions and only about 2% so roughly about 2% will take any action on what they learned today a lot of people are have great intentions and what did they say about the road to hell it's paved with great intentions good intentions so I'd love to hear exactly what it is that you're going to apply and let me know connect with me on social because I love to have virtual celebration gift dances with you, okay? To know that you actually applied what you learned. All right, so let me go back here. There we go. Oh, go back here to talk about Q&A and see what questions that you have. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording as promised uh, because 